Wow, stand with me as I read the word today, if you would please. Stand with me, and it is good to see Adana and Bethany here today. We're so glad to, to have God's blessing and favor on us, and that you guys are here. And thank you for being here. I want you to uh, open, turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 12, if you would. Hebrews chapter 12, it's at the end of the New Testament. Um, and uh, I'm going to just, today I'm going to read the word. I'm going to preach until I'm done. And then when I'm done, then we'll just go from there and see what happens, all right? So I'm not going to necessarily preach, a, preach every little point that I have. I'll just preach until I've done, unburdened it off of my heart. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Let us run this uh, race with endurance, the race that is set out before us, looking unto Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You may be seated. May God add blessing to receiving of the word today. And uh, We're glad you're here. Welcome to, to praise. We are thankful that you're here in, uh, in our service today. Labor Day weekend, and uh, boy, in just a couple weeks, things are getting full swing, so we're just glad your Wednesday night's already started, so make sure you join us on Wednesday nights for Bible study. We have Bible study on Wednesday nights. We have, uh, small, we have small groups. We have coming up, we've got um, kids' ministry going on, so there's a lot of great stuff happening here. Um, I said it in the first service, and I'll say it, and I said it Wednesday night too, but um, last night when, when you went to bed, and you went to sleep last night, the Bible's pretty clear that we have an intercessor. Jesus was praying for you. Did you know that? Last night when, when you went to bed, no matter where you were, no matter what you had been doing, no matter what, who you've been talking to, that Jesus um, is praying for you individually. He's not praying for y'all and all y'all. By the way, that's the plural for y'all in the South. It's not you guys, it's y'all or all y'all. That's plural. He wasn't praying for all y'all. He's praying for you individually. And this morning you come to church and this morning you're in the house of God. And can I, can I tell you, some of you came here this morning, you don't know where, where your children are. You don't know where your child is. This morning you came into the house of God, you don't know where your wife is. You don't know where your husband is. You're not sure where your mom and dad are right now. You came to this house this morning and you are uncertain about where some people are in your life. Where are they? What are they doing? What are they a part of? Some of you haven't heard from your family in a while. Can I tell you what I do know from the Word? I do know that although you don't know where they are, God knows exactly where they are. And there is a truth to the Word that says that no, although you don't know where they are, that by your prayer and by His intercession and by your love for, for the Lord and you going after God, that God is not going to just let them go. But God has a, a lasso around their waist and He's... He's pulling on them, although they, they may be in sin right now. That Holy Spirit of God is still pulling conviction at them and pulling on their heart. They're not by themselves, and God knows where they are today. This morning, you, you may have come into this place with a heaviness in your heart, and maybe depression, maybe struggling, maybe battling whatever you've been wrestling with, and you showed up to the house of God this morning, and no matter what's going on out there, you come into this place, and I'm going to tell you something about this place. In this place, you need to know that we believe that we serve a God who not only knows your need, he's a God who can lift your need, lift your burden, take care of your circumstance. That's very biblical. And we come to this place with that in mind. We come to, here, to this place knowing that that is where we are. So if you came here discouraged, or you came here struggling, or you came here beaten down, or depressed, or anxious, are struggling with sin and guilt ridden can I tell you you've come to the right place because in this place there is a burning lifting God and the truth for you today is to say look don't look to circumstances and don't look to your problem and not necessarily look to your battle look to Jesus look to Jesus look to Jesus now here, here's what I want to tell you my wife and I occasionally will drive out to uh to Fripp Island or drive out to uh, Hunting Island and those areas. I know Butch and Jennifer drive out there all the time. Some of you drive out there to go the, to, the, to the beach and enjoy the beach. Uh, Kim's uh, cousin owns a house out on Fripp, so we'll go once in a while, hang out out there, but go out there once in a while. Kids do it more than I do. 
But as we're driving to uh, Hunting Island or Fripp Island, we'll go over that big drawbridge. That lovely, scary, rickety, small, narrow drawbridge. And they're building an, another one next to it, thank God. So we'll drive over the bridge, and, and as we're driving over, once in a while, Kim will say, Look at those shrimp boats out there. They look like that's so neat. And, and look there, I just saw a dolphin out in the water. And I'll start looking and saying, did you really? And I'll start looking to where she's pointing to. And her immediate command is, no, don't look. You drive straight over this bridge. Because she knows that when I start, or you, you and I do the same thing, that when I start looking towards something, that's what I move towards, Right? And I'm, a, I'm, I'm concerned that some of us in the middle of our of, of a battle, depression, anxiety, struggle, discouragement, that we look at the wrong things. Instead of looking to Jesus, the one who can solve our problem. And when we do that, when we look to the wrong things, I can tell you what happens to me. When I get my eyes off of Jesus, I get more irritable. When I get my eyes off of Jesus, I'm hard to deal with. When I get my eyes off of Jesus, I'm open to temptation. When I get my eyes off of Jesus, I get concerned and worried. I get heavy because I've got my eyes off of the one who can take care of me. Instead, I'm looking around to everything else. And so this morning, I just want to take a few moments and tell you that you just need to turn your attention and stare at Jesus for a few minutes. Turn your attention and stare at Jesus. Look to him. Turn your mind and your eye and your focus and where you're going and what you're dealing with to the one who is able to move mountains for you. How many in this room, don't, don't raise your hand, when you read the Bible, believe, believe that when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, God provided a ram in the thicket. How many of y'all believe that? You want to raise your hand? How many of you believe that? It's in the Bible, right? How many of you believe that when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, that God split a whole sea, the Red Sea was split, and, and the children of Israel walked on dry land. How many of y'all know that's true? That's in the Bible. You believe that, don't you? How many of y'all believe in this room, don't say it out loud, believe that while they were in the wilderness for all those years, God provided water out of a rock and God provided manna every single day so they could be fed. And he did it for 40 years. I read somewhere how many tons of bread it would take per day to feed people. How many of y'all believe that? Don't raise your hand. How many believe it? I mean, these are, now think about it for a moment. In our world, that, that, those are, how in the world does that happen? Our world looks at that going, that has to be miraculous. Because the, the natural world thinks you guys, you and I believe something crazy. How, how many in this room believe, because you have to believe this to be a Christian, that there was a man named Jesus who was a sinless man who died on the cross and rose again from the dead, was born of a virgin, Virgin Mary. Look, imagine that, rose from the dead. And when you talk to the world, they would say, you believe some crazy things. Because the Bible says the world doesn't understand spiritual matters. So when they look, the world looks at us going, wait a minute, you mean you believe Moses split the Red Sea by God's power? You believe God fed manna, them manna in the wilderness for 40 years, gave them water to drink? You believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, rose again? You believe all that? Absolutely. Well, if you believe all that, you need to believe God is able to meet your need and bear your burden. If you believe that, then you need to say, I also believe that I don't have to live in this heaviness and I don't have to live in this anxiety and I don't have to live in this depression and I don't have to live in this guilt, but I can be free of this because I can look to Jesus and he is able to lift those things off of my life. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says very clearly, I just told you, I'm going to preach until I get done. The Bible says very clearly that here's what we have around us. The scripture says, I just read it, therefore, since we've been surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. What does that mean? It means that these witnesses testify of the certainty of our success. I I read somebody somebody this week who said, the reason the writer of Hebrews wants you to see this great cloud of witnesses because they want you to know when you're living for God that there are witnesses before you who not only by faith served him in Hebrews 11, but witnesses before you who are great, cl- and they made it great cloud of witnesses, and they made it, and they show you the certainty that you're going to make it to. And your focus has to be 
on those. And they're cheering you on. They're saying, you're running this race, but you're not alone. You're, you're, you're running this race, but there's one that we honor, and we honor Jesus. First of all, we, culture of honor means to honor, number one, Jesus. And we're looking to Jesus, and as we run this race, and these witnesses are there, and they're cheering us at tone to victory. Hebrews 11 witnesses, the people like David, people like Samson, people that he's in there, people like Abraham, people like uh, Moses who were champions who won victoriously. And they tell you that these people of faith that trusted God, they had victory. And you too are going to have victory because they succeeded. They made it through. You're going to make it through too. And this crowd of witnesses is cheering us on. And not only those witnesses, I believe you may or may not know what, it, what, what I mean by this, but some of us have the witnesses of family and grandma and papa and, and moms and dads and children and family members who have gone on before or maybe even been faithful to the work of God and they've gone through adversity. You can look around this room, they're saints of God who have some years on them, but they can tell you something. David said at one time, David said, I have been young, but now I'm old. You know what he means by that? He, David is saying, I've lived life and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And some of these saints of God, listen, some of these saints of God are your witnesses to tell you, I have seen life, I have lived all these years, and I've served God for all these years, and he's never forsaken his people, and he will never forsake you. And you, listen, you need to look around as you leave here today and find some folks who have a little time on their hands, excuse me, age behind them, I'm trying to be nice how I say this, people that have had some experience in life, and look at them and say, how has God been faithful? And they will tell you, God has met every need. God has seen them through. I may not look like much, but God has been there for me. And they will help you know that if they made it and the people in the Bible made it, you're going to make it too. We've got these, this big cloud of witnesses saying, you can do this. This big cloud of witnesses around us say, you're going to survive. You're going to make it to make it and he says therefore you have surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses notice what he says you need to do lay aside every weight and sin not just sin weight and sin that easily burdens you my uh, my, my son runs track for holy trinity classical christian school i like to say that because it sounds kind of like fancy doesn't it the Holy Trinitarians is what I call them. Holy Trinity Trinitarians. They're not it's the lions, whatever. And they, this is our race last year. I didn't go to this year's race. It's out in the field, out in the wheat field, whatever field. I need a wheat field. Out in the hay field. And, uh, and he's up there, and he's got his uniform on. And I, I jokingly said, I'd be embarrassed to wear that thing, Press. Of course, you know I'd be embarrassed to wear that thing. But I look at it, and I'm going, he's got on his, his jersey and his shorts and, he, and shoes, you know there are certain shoes, keep it right there because i got to say this. I didn't say it in first service, but I'm stirred up about it. I'm, I'm not happy about this. There are certain shoes that you call running shoes that they're the best running shoes for you. That sounds great. And, and you need to get these running shoes so you can, you, you can run faster and you can run better. That sounds great. And by the way, these running shoes will cost you three times as much as you thought they would. All right? Because they're lighter. And they're better for you. But that whole, I'm telling you, I, I tried to find his uniform this morning. We couldn't find it because Kim's not in town. So, <laughs> The jersey he's wearing, the shorts he's wearing probably don't weigh a few ounces. Because when you run, you're running as light as possible, right? You're running as light as possible because you want to get the best time. And that light Weight may, helps you run with any hindrances. Now, go ahead, guys. You can turn that. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, lay aside the sin and the weight that easily entangles you. Now, I I'm, 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 said it in first service, and people looked at me funny. But I'm amazed sometimes how easy it is for me to do wrong. Amen, Pastor. It is. It's easy for me to do wrong. Because I'll, I'll have a situation where I'll get mad about something and I'll, I'll gossip. I'll say something I shouldn't say. And then I say, God, I shouldn't have done it. And then I'll do it the next day. 
Or I'll be a- out angry about something. I get angry at people and, and I'll get frustrated. Or maybe uh, I'll get envious of somebody's success. Possibly get to a place where I find myself saying, well, I, I, I just find myself saying, God, I want to please you. But, but I see in, in me, there's, if I'm not careful, there's a lot of things that just rise up. I don't want. The Bible even talks about a root of bitterness. I talked about it Sunday morning. Excuse me, Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening. Uh, the root of bitterness can rise up in you. You, you ever been hurt by people? Don't raise your hand. You ever been hurt by people? You ever been offended by somebody? Has anybody done something to you? Anybody done you wrong? Anybody hurt you? Anybody broken you? Anybody just mistreated you, left you, uh, split up with you, ran off with somebody else on you, and bitterness is in you? Guess what? That's a sin, man. Well, pastor, I have a right. You don't have a right. Jesus the only one got rights. I gave up my rights when I went to, to when I get, went, went to Calvary and gave my heart to Jesus. But this root of bitterness, you know what happens? If you're not careful, that thing, that thing will rise up inside of you. And the Bible says, don't let the sin that easily besets you, the sin that easily grabs a hold of you, hinder you from your race. I know when we, uh, Hilda Avenue, we lived in Hilda Avenue uh, for a, about a year. This time last year we were on Hilda. And, and so I'm in there uh, uh, thinking about uh, Hilda didn't, doesn't have a lot of grass in the yard. It got a lot of weeds. Weeds, no grass, no lawn. How's your lawn? It's not a lawn. It's dirt and weeds. And I would cut grass once in a while there, and I'd, I'd, cut, it, I'd cut it as low as I possibly could because I didn't want to cut those weeds again. And I'd cut that, those weeds low. I'd go low. I mean, I'm cutting grass, rocks flying everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? There's all kind of stuff messed up everywhere, just flying. Because I want to cut that thing low because I don't want to deal with those weeds. It's not a lawn that i got to worry about that's growing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting fertilizer on it. I'm not, you know, nurturing it to grow a lawn. I'm cutting weeds. And I cut that thing down low, praise the Lord. I'm going to deal with it for a while until it rains the next day. And it rains another day. And by the weekend, those weeds are back up again. I've cut it down as short as I could, but those weeds pop right back up. Can I tell you that, that in, in your life, you, you, may, you may have to daily cut those things down, daily die to yourself, I'm preaching, daily give those things to the Lord because they will rise up in you if you're not careful. They will, you got to lay that aside. You have to say, I'm, I'm laying that down, I'm cutting it down to the quick, I'm giving it to God and I don't want it to rise up again and I got to stay on it. I've got to every day, Lord, let you bear my burden. Every day give you my struggle. Every day give you my battle. Got you, brother. Every, every, every day go after those things. Because every day I need Jesus to help me live like I'm supposed to live. Because I need to lay aside the sin. I need to lay aside the sin that will easily trip me up. And then he says the weight. The weight not, it may not necessarily be sin. But it may be the struggle you're having right now. The weight may be your, your anxiety. The weight may be the burden you're bearing. You know, the Bible's pretty clear that we're, we aren't supposed to bear our burdens. The Lord is. The Bible says this. I, I could quote three scriptures right now. Cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. Number two, bless me, Lord, who daily bears our burden. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, it says in Matthew. So understand, you may be bearing and carrying some burdens with you. But I want you to know as you're running this race, that may be weighing you down. But I'm here to remind you that what weighs you down weighs God is able to take care of. And what hurts you hurts God. What you're struggling with, God sees and he cares about. What you're battling through, God is concerned about. And your problem and difficulty is not too big for God because God is able to help you. And if you're running this race and you're in this life that you're trying to serve the Lord, you will have things that you have to give God. You will have to give him your struggle. You also have to give him those things that weigh you down, those burdens that are heavy to carry. It's easy sometimes when, when you go through hard times to, to, to want to just check out. We've got a race to run, we've got a life to do, but it's easy to check out and say, I'm just, it's, it's just too heavy for me, I can't carry this anymore. Some, some, I shared this a few weeks ago, and I don't know, some of us when we go through heavy times, what we do in burdens is, is we just escape, we don't want to get out of bed. It is so easy sometimes for me, I'm going to be real with you for a minute, and they'll watch it online. I don't care. It is so easy for me at times to say I'd rather stay in bed all day than face what I've got to face. It is easy for me instead of facing what I've got to face 
to go down to Publix and get a tube of cookie dough raw and eat it. It's true. Pastor, you may get Simon. I don't, I'll deal with that when I deal with it. The Lord thy God is a healer. Amen. It's so easy for me when I'm burdened to hold on to things. Because I, I don't know about you, but, but I go through things and sometimes these things hit me and it blindside me. I had a pastor tell me one time, what, bo- what will bother you the most as a pastor, and this is your life too, by the way, is not the things you see coming, it's the things that blindside you. In your life, the things that burden you the most are not the things you see coming. It's that phone call you get. It's that letter you get in the mail. It's that comment from somebody. It's that, oh, I've got to have that conversation. Those things are the things that will blindside you and those things that overwhelm you. The Bible says that that Jesus was walking on the water and as he's on the water, the disciples were in the boat and the boat was going, I preached this last week, The the boat was storming. In that day on the Sea of Galilee, storms did not happen slowly. They happened immediately, like your storms do, just suddenly. And they were terrified, and they see Jesus. <laughs> Think about the difference, by the way. The storms on the Sea of Galilee happen quickly. The storms we're talking about, hurricane happens for, it takes forever, doesn't it? <laughs> Hurricane's coming. Okay, really, it's like this. It's coming. And we get people, I'm just, I'm, I, let me rant for a minute. People sometimes get on there and they, they, they get scared to death. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's not coming. Oh, it's coming. They go through this high and low in, 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 in a day's time. That morning they'll be high. That night they'll be low. Because is it coming or not? Is it coming or not? Get nervous about it. So, so look, just relax, peace, speak peace to yourself. But in that day, the storms would come immediately on the Sea of Galilee. And as they're, they're terrified because these disciples know what it is to be on the water, and they know that storm is pretty serious. They've been, they're fishermen. They understand. They've seen people drown in storms like that. They've seen, storm, they've seen boats crash in storms like that. And as they look out, they see Jesus, and he's walking towards them. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, if it's you tell me to come. And Jesus said, come and here's what I want you to know when Jesus told him to to, to come to him you know what Peter did not do Peter did not make a, a, a boat and go out to Jesus when when he said come to me Peter did not get his life raft and put it around him and swim out to Jesus when he said come to him he stepped out now people will tell you this and and I'm gonna say something it's a little take on it the Bible says that Peter walked on water but I'm gonna tell you Peter didn't really walk on water this false teaching? No, it's not. Peter didn't walk on water. He walked on the Word. And when Jesus said, said, when Jesus said something, when Jesus says do it, it's going to happen. And G- he said come. And he went C-O-M-E. Yes, Lord. And because he obeyed God's the Word and because he stepped out on the Word, he walked on water. How am I going to get through this storm? You're going to make it through the storm. You don't make it because you've made your own raft. And you figured it out. You're just walking out on the promises of God. God, you say it. God, I'm believing it. God, you're going to do it. God, I'm looking to you. And you've got to make it happen, Lord. Fixing your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says, fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And to sit down at the right hand of God in heaven. The power of Jesus is one that he died on the cross for sin. He died on the cross for your victory. He suffered and bled for the glory of heaven and for your salvation. And he not only died, he rose again from the dead. And he right now intercedes Next to the Father. Right now, he intercedes next to the Father for you. Tommy, he's interceding right now for you. Jeff, he's interceding right now for you. Right now, he is interceding for you. He is speaking for, on your name. He's calling you out. He's talking to the Father about you. And that's who we look to. We look to the one who is interceding for us. We look to the one who knows our name, who knows our address, who knows our DNA. And we say, Lord, I'm running this race. I'm shedding everything. And I'm looking to the one who is praying for me in heaven. And I'm living here on earth. He's praying for me in heaven. And I'm fighting battles on earth. And I'm
and he's praying for me in heaven. Amen. As I'm fighting battles here on earth, he's praying for me in heaven, and he's with me here, and he's praying for me there. That's why the writer says, get your eyes on Jesus. When you're running, when you're battling, when you're fighting, lay aside those things and look at him. He's the one who can calm storms, and he's the one you look to in the middle of storms. He is. Yes and amen. This morning, if this message really spoke to where you are, you've, you've, you've been weighing down things, man. You've looked around at everything else. Man, the Lord just wants to encourage you today. Would you step out from where you are? This is just, if this message spoke to your heart and where you are, I just want to, we want to pray with you up here. This message speaks at all to you. Online, if it speaks to you, I pray it does. If this message has been right where you are, if it's in your wheelhouse, if, if the Lord is addressing you, would you come and just stand around these altars? Would you just come stand around these altars? The battle belongs to the Lord. Just receive. We're going to sing this song again. We're going to worship this song again. The battle belongs to the Lord. We're just going to worship. We're just going to spend some time and worship before God. In a few moments, we'll give you an opportunity to pray. We'll have folks ready to pray for you if you need prayer. But right now, I want you to stand around this altar. Just come on, everybody. There's a lot of folks coming. We're going to sing this. And we're going to believe God for it. And we're going to lift this up before God.